much for joining us today on Feeling Good, sponsored by Warren County Community Services. I'm your host, Shelley Abrams, and today we are celebrating a very special group of individuals, and many of you in our audience may be included in this group of individuals and to discuss caregivers as this is caregivers month and actually every month should be caregivers month um, i am happy to introduce to you a new friend of mine anna gubo from versailles ohio and now she lives in kentucky and drove here to the studio today from kentucky I really appreciate you making that drive, Anna. It's my pleasure, Shelley. Well, I appreciate um, all that you do in your position with Council on Aging, correct? Correct. Tell us a little bit about um, your job description, um, your maybe avocation, what drew you uh, to Council on Aging and so forth. We'd love to hear. Well, Shelley, I've been a nurse for over 30 years. I've been with the Council on Aging almost 30 of those years. Um, I was very fortunate that um, I had a terrible experience in my first nursing job, and I realized this isn't what I wanted to do. So I was able to find a position with the Council on Aging. The elderly have always been near and dear to my heart. Um, Prior to being a nurse, I was a caregiver. I cared for my grandmother who was in her 80s with dementia. So I was one of these caregivers that was literally thrown into the role. Hmm. I had no experience really what I was doing, but because I was in nursing school, it was thought that it was a good idea for me to be the caregiver right. for my grandmother. Right. So right. I did, um, I used that role to really advocate for my caregivers. I know what it's like to be in their shoes. So this role for me at the Council on Aging is almost a dream come true. It's, it's amazing to be able to work with those caregivers and see myself when I was so young and struggled so much and be able to help them out and figure how to be a better caregiver because they all wanna just be the best caregiver they can be but they forget about themselves. So it's such a difficult role to be thrown into and to have someone like myself, my role is just to work with those caregivers. Show them maybe where their resources are, what kind of help they can get, how to take care of themselves so that everybody in the end game, everyone's happy. Mom and dad or my aunt or whomever it is I'm caring for, they get to stay at home, they get to stay happy with their family, but the caregivers are taken care of as well. Now tell me this, because I've been doing a little research and I, I actually, I was referring to this article, I'll just hold this up, that was in the current uh, ARP newsletter or mm -hmm. news magazine. And this is an article discussing the growing need for caregivers, the projections, and uh, it's just, it's a little overwhelming. It, it really is amazing when you look at the numbers. Here in Ohio, we have over 1.5 million unpaid caregivers, and they provide millions of hours in care. And if we didn't have those unpaid caregivers, because there is such a huge crisis with the age shortage across the country, a lot of these seniors would have no other options mm -hmm. but to find a facility that could meet their needs. So the age shortage is very real. It has affected our area very greatly. Here in Warren County, being more of a rural county, it, it, gets even more difficult sometimes to find that aid and that service. So caregivers really have to spread themselves very thin to manage all of the needs that are being thrown at them. 
Um, I'm happy to say that Ohio is taking the initiative of looking at this problem and trying to solve some of it. And here locally, the Council on Aging has created an app that will help caregivers who are interested in working with the elderly match them to the elderly that need those caregivers. Maybe they're not necessarily trained as a home health aide, but they can do light housekeeping and grocery shopping. So to expand that workforce in that way, we are hoping will alleviate some of the pain that we see here locally with that aid shortage. So the history of caregiving, <laughs> and right here, look at this. I just noticed this uh, right next to the article I mentioned to you. This is your caregiving hub, and it's talking about you know, communication and, and so forth. This, this particular item. So it's almost like everywhere you look that caregiving is a theme. Caregiving affects every family almost. Mm -hmm. You know, our mm -hmm. average caregiver is a female, 49.4 years of age, with children at home still. And when you think about all of the demands of just being a working mom, and then throw in your, your caregiver as well, there's so many demands on you and it takes a lot of time. And the items that are available nowadays, the apps to help with time management, with communication between families, they really are key in keeping everybody in the loop and on board with what's going on with mom or dad's care. So, so could you walk us through um, in your position uh, walk us through uh, an initial contact. Say if I were, if I were in a situation now, uh, I can remember when my mom and dad were living, and I lived, um, you know, in North Central Ohio was where they lived, mm -hmm. and I lived here in Warren County, and so the the caregiving challenges were. N too numerous to even list mm -hmm. because it's kind of suddenly you find yourself in that role. Um, at least in in my case, it was it was rather sudden um, because when my mother passed away, then my dad was the one that really he he was by himself mm -hmm. and really needed to have those kinds of resources, mm -hmm. you know, coordinated and so on and so forth. So, so could you give us um, maybe an anecdotal uh, idea of um, if I were to call you and say, mm -hmm. I need help? Absolutely. Uh, the Council on Aging, we, our area in Southwest Ohio is the five Southwestern counties. So mm -hmm. anyone, any caregiver who is caring for someone 60 or older or someone regardless of age with dementia, they can call the Council on Aging if they live in those five counties we cover and ask for a referral. The referral comes to myself or my coworker. We will contact that caregiver, discuss you know, what is happening in their role, what's, what's going on, and we offer to meet with them to do an assessment of what are those caregivers' needs? What information do they need to have? Caregivers come to us with all kinds of knowledge and experience. So we make sure that every caregiver knows, reach out to this organization for this type of assistance, or you might be eligible for this type of assistance. When you're thrown into that role, and particularly us, the younger ones, We've had no reason to access senior services, so we don't even know where to begin. So a lot of my caregivers, that initial meeting is all about, let me tell you all the resources that are out there for you, yourself as a caregiver, as well as the loved one and the situation that you're dealing with. We try to just make them connect the dots, help them to connect those dots. and find those resources that will inevitably keep that person safe and at home. So they would call you directly? They call the Council on Aging, 513-721-1025. Okay. Um, uh, 
our intake department specialists are happy to talk to them and explain a little bit more about the program. All they have to do, though, is explain they would like a referral to the caregiver support program. Okay, very good. So um, you were introduced to the program. Uh, what, over 30 years ago? Is that what you're saying? I have been with the council for 30 years. Now, okay. I have only been doing caregiver support the last five. Oh, okay. um, We kind of resurrected it, if you will. Okay. Um, we do receive some federal funding through the Older Americans Act to provide caregiver support. Mm -hmm. And we felt it was really time to focus on these caregivers and help them because inevitably if we can get to those caregivers and educate them we can keep that person at home a lot longer maybe they'll never step foot in a long-term care facility the whole goal at the council on aging is to help seniors stay at home and to do so safely so in helping the caregivers understand where to turn, where to, uh, what they can get, what they can expect, and what all of this means. You know, it's a huge help to those caregivers in figuring out the many pieces of the puzzle of caregiving. Well, I know that, um, you know, in my, I know my situation the best, and I'll just make that the reference point. Um, trying to make my dad feel as if he wasn't feeble, he didn't want to be seen as feeble, mm -hmm. and trying to convince him that having help would be the best thing and would really end up helping me mm -hmm. to help him, mm -hmm. to accept the help. So do you, do you have that situation? I have that very frequently, um, and be it because of pride or just embarrassment sometimes on the senior, you know, it's very difficult and we have to acknowledge that right. and, and accept that. But in doing so, I think there's a compassionate way of addressing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell caregivers, you know, you want to let them know that this is ultimately for their safety and well-being and that it does mean tremendous amounts to you to have that mm -hmm. support and care. They typically are very resistant um, to make those changes, to accept any help. But if you can get that the right person in there, um, even just to start a relationship and, and build the trust with the individual, we do find that they are more accepting once they get to that point where, okay, this isn't so bad, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. someone come and run the vacuum for me and, and do these things that I really have a hard time doing. Um, it may take many conversations and a lot of patience on the caregiver behalf to convince the individual to accept that help, but be empathetic to where they're at mm -hmm. and what they're going through and the loss that they are perceiving right. in having to accept this help. Right, right. Well, I do remember also, I was, I was, you know, this has been several years ago, but it stays in your mind as a fresh memory, um, that the caregivers coming in would introduce not only um, household helping with household tasks and so forth. But um, they also recommended adaptive kinds of things. Now, my, my dad had um, dealt with Parkinson's okay. issues. So even something as, um, you know, like buttoning his shirt mm -hmm. would be a challenge. And I remember that um, we looked for adaptive kinds of things to help with shirt buttoning and uh, Velcro kinds of uh, clothing that was fashion so it would be easier just, you know, just to get dressed. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, I would guess that your network of, um, you know, caregiving would include adaptive 
types of recommendations? We absolutely do try to keep up on adaptive equipment mm -hmm. um, and innovative equipment mm -hmm. that can be helpful. Um, I learn a lot from my caregivers who have been so savvy to go out and look at you know all of these devices online mm -hmm. and figure out what is best for that individual's need. Um, I am not a physical therapist or a therapist in any sort, but mm -hmm. I certainly can go into a home and look at, um, you know, the, the bathroom is typically a big issue. There may be a need for grab bars mm -hmm. or different types of equipment that m would accommodate that individual's bathroom. And we certainly can look and re make recommendations for those things. There are some wonderful caregiver sites that, um, for instance, AARP has great information for caregivers on new things that are coming out, devices and technology that can be used all over the place and very easily. So we definitely try to keep up. It's a hard task, especially with the electrical, electronic side of things right. moving so quickly, but there are definitely some great resources out there for that. Well, we, uh, we had a guest on a few months ago on Feeling Good. It was, he was a professor, or a retired professor at Miami. We were talking about the demographic changes and um, that this will be the first time in history that seniors, which I, what you would normally say 60 and over, mm -hmm. you would say mm -hmm. 60 and over, um, will be the largest demographic group of any other age group. And this is a first, uh, historically. It is amazing to see how many more seniors we have. And I, I read a, a statistic by 2025 here in Ohio, we will have more seniors than we will have anyone o under the age of 18. And that it comes at a time where baby boomers are starting to retire right. and our, our health needs, you know, we're living longer and, but we have greater health needs and we're gonna have a lesser workforce to choose from. So caregivers are gonna have to be very creative in managing how they can provide that care. And it, a lot of it will go back to the adaptive equipment and, and technology that it will make it. You know, we have smart homes now that right. are amazing, um, but not everybody has that availability to live mm -hmm. in a smart home. So trying to accommodate what we have, it, it's, it's a real concern and it will be what drives, I think, a lot of technology changes in the coming years. Well, as we're going into our holiday season, um, do you find more uh, demand for assistance uh, with caregiving? You know, it, we do. We see a, an increase in referrals coming our way, um, particularly right after a holiday, um, right after Thanksgiving or Christmas when families have had a chance to come in, maybe from out of town, and really get a sense of what is happening with mom and dad and what is what their needs are. We definitely tend to see an increase in referrals around those times um, because it's ever present in their eyes um, at those times. So they may become, come home for a week and, oh, while I'm here, I'm gonna do some research and find out what, what is available and they'll find the Council on Aging. Very good, very good. And you work in conjunction with Warren County Community we do. Services as we well, do. right? Right, okay. So they would be a good contact as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, they're a great contact. Um, they can answer a lot of the questions that caregivers have about what care is is actually needed for right. that individual and, right. and where to get that. And if that caregiver needs the additional support, they will certainly connect them with the Council on Aging to come up and do caregiver support for that individual. Well, do you, um, what do you see as future um, either future trends or future kinds of issues that you would like for our audience to know about that maybe they should be aware 
certain things are on the horizon, uh, that type of thing. You know, there's a lot of push with the medical field for caregivers really to be included um, with conversations about their loved one's care. And, you know, we all know HIPAA is a real issue. Um, and how do we make sure that the caregivers and the loved ones that they're taking care of, that everyone is considered in the plan of care for that person. Mm -hmm. Because often the caregiver is so vital in providing good information. Often the seniors like to put on a front, if you will, mm -hmm. um, when they talk with medical professionals. Oh, I'm good, I'm really doing great, I, I can do this and I can do that. And the caregiver is often standing behind them shaking their head no. So, you know, I, I do see that there is a trend for more caregiver involvement um, with the medical profession. Okay. And that to me is a very good thing. Um, we all need to be on the same page, working together, and that caregiver can share a lot of vital information to our medical professionals. Have you, have you started using uh, online services with your clients? I mean, do you do the tele, telehealth we, or teleconferencing? We, uh, we don't. Typically, I, I certainly will talk to a caregiver by phone anytime mm -hmm. that um, that caregiver calls. That's mm -hmm. part of the service that I provide. Um, but we try to meet with them. And really, initially, particularly, we get a much better sense of where that individual is and what they're really dealing with if we can see them and talk to them in their own environment. So you, you typically would go to their home? I come to them okay. wherever they're comfortable. Okay. Um, there are some caregivers that if they are caring for their loved one in their home, it's very difficult to have that conversation. So I might meet them outside of their home, okay. and that, but close to their home. I come to them. I don't want them to have to stress over any part. They've got enough stress. So I tell caregivers, you know, wherever you're comfortable, I will meet you there. And we will discuss and go through whatever we can do to provide just some support and help. Very good. Well, just in preparation for the program today, um, I was talking with um, a couple of friends that have been on both sides. They've been caregivers and recipients of mm -hmm. care. And I asked them, um, you know, what would, be, what would be issues that you would, you know, mention or that, that you would bring up? And I think one of the things um, that came up was more of uh, the paperwork and the uh, <laughs> and and how to navigate uh, the paperwork, which you probably don't even have any control over, but but just kind of the the timeliness of of having someone to talk with, and then navigating the paperwork. It is very difficult because you know you're looking at a lot of different options mm -hmm. when you're looking at um, what does my parent need? Mm -hmm. And you know, for instance, maybe dad's a veteran and he's never gotten any VA services before, okay. but he may very well qualify for that. Well, if any one of your listeners has dealt with the VA, it can be, it, it is a time consuming and, and lots of paperwork and red tape it seems like, but there are resources out there to help you with that paperwork. Okay. So again, knowing where that resource is, the Veteran Service Organization, I tell caregivers, don't call the 800 number for the VA. Call your local county Veteran Service Organization. They are phenomenal and they understand that paperwork. So they, you know, maybe they can't decrease the paperwork, right. but they can certainly help you understand it and understand what that process is. And again, if you understand and know what to expect, it's a lot easier than the stress of not having a clue what to expect. Right, right. And, and knowing that there are resources available closer to, closer to home, literally, uh, in the town that you live in, or at least in the county. In the county, absolutely. Most, most counties would, 
would have those types of uh, Mo all of the counties resources. have veteran service organizations right. and because we deal with the five counties we deal with uh -huh. you know we try to keep up on what what are the agencies that are out there that serve all of our individuals mm -hmm. with any type of disability or any type of need so sharing that information and being able to hand something to a caregiver and say for instance, Pro Seniors is here in Southwest Ohio. If you have a legal question or concern, here's a number. Call them and see if they can't be of assistance to you. Okay. Okay. So, so contacting Council on Aging would be the initial call. That would and be the then, yes. And then, as they would have more conversation with. Once we do an assessment okay. and understand more, really, what is going on, what are the, our thoughts about eligibility for programs right. or services, then we will produce those resources with that caregiver um, as we discuss those. Right. And of course, they're, at, they're under extra stress, so anytime you're in a stressful situation, I'm sure that you've, you've learned to deal with people that um, are under stress. <laughs> I get a lot of calls from a lot of caregivers that are, you know, literally in tears. Right, um, right. Caregiver burnout is real. You know, they give 110% of themselves and have nothing left for themselves. Right. And so that is a lot of what I do is just talking with those caregivers about, you know, how do you take care of yourself? How do you get from being burned out? What are some activities that you can do for yourself that you will that will meet that those needs for you? And I noticed that in a couple of articles, I think I emailed to you, they they did list a number of different you know have a support group mm -hmm. uh, for caregivers. Absolutely, support groups. We share with all of our caregivers, you know, where support groups are located mm -hmm. and how to access them. You know, we share information about how to take care of yourself. If you have five minutes in the day that you can sit and be with yourself or doing something that you like to do, then we encourage you to do that and not feel guilty about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the caregivers, even if they try to take care of themselves, they feel guilty in doing so right. because they're taking time away from their loved one. But if just like on the, the airplane, if you don't put that oxygen mask on yourself, you cannot help save someone else. Well, that's a good analogy to, uh, to use as a, as a thought uh, because you do have to be healthy before you can You have to take care of yourself. You have to be able to meet your needs. Eat well as well as you can. I know it can be hectic exercise as you can and if it means I can't get out of the house well can you do steps can you walk around you know is there something else that you can do to get that physical exercise as I said every part of caregiving is about creativity you have to be creative in making this role happen very good, very good. Well those I think just the idea that caregiving is focused upon um, and it is, is it because of kind of November being, you know, we kind of look at thankfulness, gratitude, and so forth. Is that how maybe uh, November was selected as I a don't know exactly <laughs> the reason, but I would say that's, that's a very good bet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I am very thankful for all of our caregivers that are out there that are just doing their best to keep their loved one at home. As I mentioned, seniors are near and dear to my heart. So anything that we can do to keep them happy, keep them at home for whatever amount of days that they have, it's important to all of us to do that and be part of that movement. Very good. Well, I know different times I've mentioned Meals on Wheels is what really um, uh, drew me to Warren County Community Services okay. because my parents were involved in being, um, you know, they were volunteers for the program up in North Central Ohio. And then they became recipients uh, at a certain point. They became recipients of Meals on Wheels. And I can remember them saying, especially my dad saying, that sometimes that was the only person that they saw that day or spoke to that day. And just having that 
uh, contact mm -hmm. was so important um, to them. So, so as we've got, as we've been experiencing, um, you know, the pandemic and the quarantining, the isolation, um, that isolation has been um, a key issue to deal with just just exponentially the last couple of years it have really, you seen have you seen that I have as and well? unfortunately what I see is we do work with a lot of caregivers who are caring for someone with dementia or a cognitive impairment mm -hmm. and you know during the pandemic it was amazing shocking how many of those individuals we lost and I do believe it was the social isolation mm -hmm. that really affected their health. Um, I can't say that there's a study been done on it, but I know enough to know about caregivers and what they've gone through and what their care recipients went through during the pandemic and the social isolation, not being able to see anyone, you know, that really their cognitive decline went down very quickly for a lot of my my caregivers and the individuals they were caring for. So it definitely has had an exponential impact. I am super happy that we are coming out and we are getting out again. Um, and as you said, sometimes just that simple interaction with a meals driver, having that someone know that you're, you're there and that, you know, it really means everything. Right, right. Well, do you have any upcoming events or anything that you'd like to promote while we're talking? I don't know of any upcoming events. Okay. Um, kind of going into the winter months, it gets a little um, more difficult um, to get caregivers together. Um, I'm happy to say our the caregiver support team we have been working in conjunction with Live Well over the pandemic, mm -hmm. and we created a virtual reality training. Oh. Um, it is an Oculus Quest headset um, that immerses the caregiver into one of five scenarios that they may deal with as a caregiver. And you will probably see a lot of promotion for this caregiver training in the next few months. We're hoping to really get it out let our caregivers experience it. And, you know, our goal is ultimately to keep growing the content of it so that we have a whole library of virtual reality trainings that someone could just put a headset on. It immerses them in that environment. It shows them what that care recipient is feeling or maybe experiencing. And then it also gives them that scenario as a, from the caregiver point of view and helps them to go through and navigate, what do I do as a caregiver? What might be a best, the best response or activity? So hopefully it will, we will be promoting it and you will see it out in the community more often okay. over the next few months. Oh, great. Yes. Well, that's exciting. Very exciting. That's exciting to hear that, yes. uh, um, that Caregiving is in to technology and the training is going to be part of that. It, it goes to show again the importance of the technology piece. Right. Um, we were given the task of how can we reach caregivers if we can't see them. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. really think that this program might be a good way for many caregivers to be immersed and have those experience and, and get some real training. Very good. Very good. So once again, um, uh, as we conclude our, our discussion, unless there are other points you would like to uh, cover. You know, I, the thing I would like, I, and Shelly, I like to tell all caregivers, is, you know, many of the people maybe out there watching this show don't think of themselves as a caregiver. They think, oh, I'm just doing laundry or I'm helping with grocery shopping or I'm doing the medical appointments. You are a caregiver. Oh, yes. If you're doing those things, then it's okay to reach out now and learn about those resources now so that if your loved one does have a decline, you're in a place where you say, okay, I got this. I know where to go. I know how to get what I need, and I have the resources to do that. 
That is, that's an excellent um, suggestion to start. There, you can't really start too early. You really can In learning about uh, caregiving. Absolutely. You know, now is a great time before a crisis hits. If you're in that role, you're helping out in some way. And, you know, our engagement with our caregivers, it can be as much as they want. It can be as little as every six months I'm checking in and saying, oh, how are you doing? How are things going? Is there anything new happening or is there anything that you feel like you're stressing over that I can maybe help with? So we really allow our caregivers to, you know, determine how much do they need. You know, some caregivers don't need a lot of support and that's great, but if they need that, you know, one-on-one -on -one, I, I need to call somebody and talk through things frequently. That's okay too. Well, this our uh, this program, our interview might be a good. Well, let's sit down and watch Feeling Good, and and maybe it will start some discussion. I hope it does start conversation, right. and I really hope that caregivers open their eyes and realize, wow, I've been doing this for a few years now, right. and maybe I could learn something more. And, you know, maybe I can't teach you anything more. Maybe you're doing everything that you need to be doing. But to have that support and reassurance, I think it's a phenomenal resource. And it's free. You can't beat the price. Well, thank you so much. So grateful that you came today to, to share this information um, because I think so many of us, um, especially around the holidays, um, are, are thinking of ways to strengthen our family bonds. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have those precious memories from, um, you know, past holidays and so forth. And we want to make these holidays just as memorable. And uh, so this was, this was a good topic, I think, to, uh, to discuss today. It's, a, it's an important topic and I think if we can get the word out and get more caregivers in the know, if you will, you know, we're, we're going to do better. We're going to have more advocates for our seniors so that we have better services. And, you know, Ohio is a great state to be in um, as far as their health care and what we provide for the, the, our people. But you know, we still have a ways to go and we, we could definitely use some advocacy. On, for those individuals and caregivers tend to be great advocates for them because they know exactly what's going on. Right, very good. Well, we hope that you're taking many notes today as you're listening to our program. And thanks so much, Anna, for coming today. It's really my pleasure, It Shelley. was delightful to meet you. Thank and uh, we hope that our audience um, throughout the holidays uh, will be feeling good. Bye for now.